Hi, it's Kevin from m &E Services. This is a trilogy video and this is the third video um, to summarise the installation of infrared heating. Today I've had to use some notes so please apologize, please um, accept my apologies for flicking around a little bit just to recite some of those notes that are important that I want you all to be um, informed of. So in this video we're going to cover off um, six or seven different things. So we're going to cover off the completion of the electrical wiring. Most of it's been done in uh, video two. Um, turning on the heating and showing you how quickly or not the infrared takes to lift the ambient temperature in the rooms they're installed in. Um, a problem that we encountered, a review of the kit and finally and really important um, facts at the end are about the running costs. So as you remember from the other videos it was always my intention to install an energy logger so we can capture data um, right down from a half hour basis to an hour to a day to a week to a month and what we want to do is see exactly how much this system costs to run compared with what we were sold it on the premise of so we was told it was as cheap as gas to run and I did say from video one we will be out to prove one way or another whether this is correct so without further ado let's get into it so the first thing we learned was of all the single core cables that we had to install individually for the mats the power supply units would only accept one to three inputs so some of these where we've got lots more cables are joined together within these wago boxes and then a single pair will come out to the power supply unit so that's all done under the floor and then that travels into the power supply cupboard so in this property we've got eight separate zones so we've got cloakroom, utility, bedroom three, lounge diner, um, we'll come back to that, um, landing, hallway, bedroom two and bedroom one. So each one has its own power supply unit. So these power supply units uh, are like a mini transformer. So 240 goes in and between uh, 22 and 38 volts come out. So we've used the heat miser Neo version 2E thermostats to control each zone and the version E switches mains voltage as opposed to low voltage so you will find the heat miser do the version 2 and the version 2E, so be careful to make sure you buy the right one. Then we come to the distribution board, so this one's an existing one, hence all this crap, and it's got solar, so this is all to do with the solar, and then we put our new board in, and in addition to that, we put a smart meter in. So. This isn't required for a standard install, but what we want to do is measure what energy is being used for this property purely for the infrared. So outside is high gain aerial here because the signal, the phone signal, mobile signal in this area is particularly poor. So this meter will give us the ability then to access an online portal and 
and know exactly what it's doing day by day, week by week, month and yearly. Okay, so the first part of the video was really tailing off um, some of the electrics and there were some clips in there that we've shown before but we thought it was prudent to show it again just to set us up for what we're going into. So the next part is we've switched on and we're testing the system. So when you first call on the thermostat, put the temperature up, um, the infrared mats take about two minutes to appear on the infrared, uh, the thermal imaging camera. They don't take long, um, but the next bit we was quite surprised with. So let's have a look. Okay, so we've switched on and we've been on about 40 minutes. Um, you can see the mats come to life after about five minutes. So this is bedroom one. The red cursor that's chasing around the screen, which has gone to the light pendant, it seeks the hottest point. So if we move that out of position so it can't see the light, it puts it back on the mat. So there you can see it's detecting somewhere in the region of 34, give or take, degrees on the ceiling. And then we shoot down to the wall and it shows 22. The stat is actually reading, which you can't see, 21.2. Now we're in bedroom three. And again, we can prove with the infrared camera that the mats are working. So it shows again on the red at about 31 degrees. Um, and the heat from the, the, the mats is having no effect in the room at the minute. Um, we've recorded the room stack temperatures and they've raised, only raised 0 0.1 of one degree in nearly an hour. So there you saw the systems operational and we proved with the thermal imaging camera that everything was working as it should have done. The thing that surprised us was just how slow they are to heat. But when you think about it, an infrared heating system heats fabric and once it's heated the fabric, it then expels the heat from the fabric into the room. So you've got to understand that these work very similar to underfloor heating, where it's heating the slab or heating the structure, and then it will heat the room. So we left it on overnight, all night, and we came back, and everywhere was warm. So that was good. Then we started to inspect each individual room and thermal imaged again and found a problem. There's definitely some degradation in a couple of the mats that I've seen and that one showing 31 where the mat showing 35. So what would cause part of the mat on a two or three of them not to work properly? Okay, so following on from finding uh, this deficiency, if that's what we're going to call it in this map, um, I reported it back to the supplier. The supplier, with all due respect, are only an importer, so their technical knowledge on the wares and y fours of the resistance readings within a map are going to be somewhat limited. We we did go back and check the loft insulation above the room as suggested and we removed some um, spare loft insulation what was in other parts of the roof and we put it over the top of the affected areas. This bedroom had two outside walls um, so it had quite a big heat loss anyway but we hadn't seen this kind of thing in the other mats. So we put the loft insulation over those areas and we advised the customers to 
add another layer entirely in the loft as well because it's only going to help the efficiency of the property anyway. So we checked back um, a few weeks later we hadn't heard anything and we had to go back to install some Wi-Fi controls on a hot water cylinder and the customer um, was happy that the room was warmer. Um, the customer expected, I wouldn't say expected, the customer was um, of the impression that the bedrooms would get to 21 degrees uh, and that bedroom was a bit short of that. In accordance with SIBSI guidelines, we only ever, um, on, a, on a heating um, side, allow for 18 degrees in the bedroom. Um, so that it was achieving higher than that is a benefit. Um, but we wanted to make sure the customer was happy and totally satisfied. I've asked the customer several times since the installation's been installed, um, whether they're happy with the system, whether there's anything that you know could be done to improve it, and they've been nothing but delighted with it. So, on on that aspect, um, it's a big plus. Um, but on a, a more of a technical side, um, I need to be mindful of probably triple checking the mats and trying to understand um, what would make that happen in the mat and I don't really have the answer because they was installed the same way there's no holes drilled in them through them or anything so that's what we found and, and that's how we overcome it um, the one tip I would recommend to anybody who's retrofitting um, is use foil back plasterboard so reboard the house or the rooms that you're doing and use foil back plasterboard we didn't we, we uh, did an alternative approach in the roof but um, the more um, the more reflective you can make the back of the system the more heat input you'll actually get reflected into the room so I hope that bit helps okay so now we come on to the review of the supplier and the materials for for the installation I've made some notes, so I'm just going to flick around, so please excuse me. Um, we ordered a full system kit, uh, which included the foil mats, the cable, the thermostats, and the power unit. So, the, the whole shooting match, really. Um, we ordered the kit in July, and we were told that everything would be with us within two weeks. So we planned the installation to suit those dates. So we thought we'd given plenty of notice. Um, the 75% of the kit arrived, um, it was about four weeks later, not two weeks, and the remaining parts of it um, were very painfully slow, and the last part that came, which enabled us to complete the job, was a total of eight weeks. So the duration was painful. Um, and I'm sure there are reasons for it, um, but there was quite a lot of frustration trying to get the last bits um, of the kit. Um, but like I say, that may well have improved by now. We were just unfortunate. Um, so the component parts, the foil mats come rolled up and numbered. So a design is completed and it tells you what numbered map goes in what rooms. Um, and when you get the maps, that you will then take your resistance readings of all those maps and document them. And then you'll do that again once you've installed it. So you're just checking the integrity of the map to make sure you haven't damaged it in the installation process. Um, the cable, I think I got six rolls of cable. It wasn't enough. Um, <clears throat> um, the cable isn't stocked at every electrical wholesaler um, but we did find it in readiness at Rexel um, a, natural, um, a national electrical wholesaler so we, we was able to get over that hurdle okay the heat misers are readily, readily available on the market but they came with a kit 
Um, you can buy them separate, you can buy the cable separate. Um, the power units um, are made um, by a company in the UK and the sizes that I was given that I asked so I could set out that cupboard that you've seen in the videos precisely, uh, a couple of them came different of a different size which was quite annoying um, when you got a bit of OCD and you wanting everything to be absolute um, absolutely right and when the final one did come um, it was a completely different output because it didn't have any of the ones I wanted so the power supply units really did let the system down however um, it all came together and the system's operational and and you know it, it's done and dusted but if you are wanting to install a system for yourselves allow a couple of months and that's all I'll say just allow a couple of months don't, don't think that you are going to um, order one and have all your kit next week because that certainly didn't happen in our uh, with our experience so now we get to the running costs Will the system be as cheap to run as gas as I was sold it on the premise of? Now let's be clear, I was always sceptical on whether it could be. So I chose the property to install it with care. The property that we installed it to has solar PV. So the feeding tariff actually pays the property owner way in excess of what their annual energy bill is likely to be as things stand at the moment. Next year it should still, albeit we will see some significant rises. So let me dive in and share my screen and I'll show you and talk you through how I've analysed with the date, limited data that we've got so far um, of, um, of where we are. So you can see now our online portal for this specific property. Okay, so we are looking at the month of November through to December. I'm going to go down, we, we look at it daily and half hour data if, if we want to and we hover over the bars and it tells us what increments of energy we've used per day. But I'm more interested on the cumulative readings down below. So when I saw the customer last week, they told me that they'd received a bill for 60 seven sixty eight pound certainly less than seventy pound of which this is proved here so all I've done to get to a cost is multiply the change which is how many units of electricity it's used in that month by fifteen pence per unit so four hundred and fifty kilowatts times fifteen pence per kilowatt Everyone's on different rates, I understand that, but I've taken a mean average. What we've got to understand here as well is October was mild. November wasn't particularly cold either. But November, we've used 736 kilowatts. So it's jumped from 450 to 736. So when, once we multiply that cost out, it's gone from 6750 in October to £110.40 in November. What I've then kind of looked at is on the EPC register, you can look at any EPC for a property that has one. And this was the property that I've installed the infrared in before they bought it this year based on the electric heating that was in when they bought it. So it's showing an annual yearly energy cost of £1438 for the year. 
what to point out on this really is an EPC uses a standard algorithm to calculate an estimated, hence the word, or stress the word, estimated. Everyone who lives in a property uses their energy, their hot water and their heating very differently. But the algorithm uses an average. So what, I, what I've done is find an average or another property of a similar kind of usage um, size, if, if you will, that's on gas. So this was the property that we put the infrared in before. So it's averaging uh, its potential estimated yearly energy cost is 1438. And then I found something similar. All right, on gas, and it shows 877. So we know that the difference between the gas and electric um, is different anyway. Um, but what we're expecting it to do is drop down to roughly 877. Now, the readings that we've taken do not include hot water. I'm only measuring heating. So you've got to add, say, 3,000 kilowatts per annum to the um, annual amount that we're using in this property. If I was to take the average of the months that we've, this month, September, we've barely been online. But if we were to take the average of that, which I know we can't do, and add 3,000 kilowatts, the average, the estimated annual cost for running that property would be about the same as the electric heating in truth um, so our early conclusion and it's only an early conclusion is that it is not as cheap to run as gas and closer to electric heating which is what it is. The benefit, again, at the property where I've installed it by design is that it had PV and it has PV. And the feeding tariff is in excess of the bills. So they're actually making money. Um, their, their energy is for free. The customer's incentive for installing it is they just wanted to get rid of the hideous looking electric panel heaters. So, in summary, this system should not be considered, in my own opinion, as a replacement for anything gas. But if you are off the gas grid and you're on electric or LPG, then it's certainly a contender. It is also aesthetically pleasing and the heat that it generates uh, is comfortable and it's really nice. There are a lot of installation things you need to take into consideration. It's quite a lot of work installing it. So that's my summary of the infrared. And I, I will add, if necessary, a further video after the system has run for 12 months to summarise exactly what it's cost over the 12 months and then add the hot water to it. So I hope this series has been really helpful. If you have got any questions, any concerns, if you need any advice on how to install it, please reach out. I'm here and um, I'm happy to help. Okay, bye for now.